Oh, it worked. Can you all see, I hope? There should be a way where I can at least see you down the side. There we go. There we go. Okay. Thank you. So, but what Rotary did, if, if, if you are aware in the Western Hemisphere um, and Southern Hemisphere and Canada, membership has been declining as compared to what we see in um, Asia and other parts of the world. Because again, we are global. And so what Rotary did is they surveyed those strong clubs, those clubs that were stable, those clubs that didn't have the huge turnover of membership. And they surveyed those clubs to see what were the, the common characteristics of those clubs that made them strong. And there are basically five characteristics. And they include things like service. People join because they want to have an impact. They're also strong because they have strong leaders in their clubs. And Rotary is huge on training leaders. And what's important for this, for new clubs as well as old, is, is leadership training can apply both to your Rotary world as well as your, your public world, your, your, your work world, your other things you do in your life. And, and that's really, really cool and important. So leadership. The other thing which really ties into today's session is strong clubs set goals and they have an action plan to achieve those goals. They are also number four, big at telling their story big at getting what they do out through social media, through newspapers, through big celebrations, because think about it. If your members see the splash of what you're doing in the big community, that ties them in to your club more and more. But the fifth point, which is probably the biggest, is that these clubs are actively, purposefully, and intentionally engaging their members in the things that their members want, okay? So the next step from recognizing these characteristics of strong clubs is Rotary thought, well, you know what? We better update our action plan and our strategic plan because the world is changing. Um, demographics are changing. Technology is changing. There's new ways to connect and make an impact. So in 2018, Rotary updated their strategic plan to recognize four priorities. And you see these on the screen here. Your district, District 5160, for our newbies, we took that same foundation of increase impact, expand our reach, enhance member engagement and increase our ability to adapt. We took that same framework and we said, okay, at the district level, what can we do to support our clubs in these four areas? Because the only reason the district exists is to support the clubs. It's not a hierarchy where you think of a, a city, a county, a state, a federal governor government. No. All the district is, is Rotarians volunteering who are in clubs just like all of you wanting to support clubs. That's all the district is. It's a lot, so I don't mean all, but, but that's what the district is. So in 2020, we updated the district plan, strategic plan, focusing on these four areas. Now we are in 2022. And so if a club is interested in going the next step where you set your goals, your priorities, your ac actions to make your club strong, that's what this session is all about, okay? Now, this is where we get into sharing and discussion. And Claire, are you able to see people's comments in the chat? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay, so you can help me if people 
raise their hands and I can't see because this is where we want some discussion. Okay. So, so one of the first of the four priorities, again, it's increasing your impact. It is um, expanding our reach. It is engaging our members and it is helping us to be adaptable and flexible. So when we say increasing your impact, this goes back to the idea that people today, when they volunteer, their time is limited, their resources are limited. And so when you're doing things in your club, you want to be sure you're having impact. And I'm going to tell a quick story about Fairfield Sassoon when I first joined. This was back in 2005. We had, for the whole year, two service projects, only two. And we had a membership of about 70 people. One of these service projects was to cook a lunch for all of these students that were coming together to do a big competition. We had to feed them in 30 minutes. I think there were like 300 of them. Our whole club came out to volunteer for that activity, not because we needed 70 people to volunteer, but because we didn't have other avenues of impact. And so it's nice to go up to an event to volunteer and have the time to chat and get to know each other, but that's not why you're there. You want to have an impact. So what you are seeing on this screen, I mentioned that the district has people that have volunteered from clubs throughout our district, all of our 72 clubs, to volunteer to help clubs increase their impact. If this is something that is important to your club that you could see opportunities for improvement. And big picture, the things that you can do are apply for district or global grants. This gives you more money to do more things and we have people that can help you with that. Um, we also have uh, international service. How many, oh, I can't see everyone's hands. Well, raise your hands or put in chat. How many of you have gone on an international service project for Rotary? Plop it in the chat. We will keep this chat recording and we'll be able to know who's doing what. But that's like icing on the, on the cake. It is a whole different experience. I think most people probably join to serve their community. And that is awesome because then you are making the impact right there, which is great. There are other resources to help you in terms of increasing your impact. I, I shared the story of Fairfield Sassoon, how we only had two projects for a long time. We were basically a check writing club and, and I'm not sure that would work today. But if you are interested in local projects, we're putting together a list of what we call prepackaged projects. So these are things that are easily um, adapted, borrowed, to do in your club because we want to make it easy. We want you to meet the needs and interest of your members and yourself. Um, there's a lot of ideas out there for fundraising as well. Um, so so how, how about shouting out, unmute yourselves. I don't know how this is gonna work. No, this isn't gonna work. I saw that we have way too many people, which is great. Um, Add into the chat some of the things that your club is doing to increase the impact that you have locally or beyond. And if you just put that in chat, then we will have a recording of that and we will be able to share that with others. Um, Cause I am also having the time. So, Dale, I see you there, chat, put something in chat because you've had some amazing things that you've done in another club. Youth, education, literacy. Now the, the last little push I'll, I'll make on this one is if, now I'm echoing, you're kidding me. Okay, okay. How many, well, I can't ask that. So 
cause-based clubs is a whole nother animal of really marketing and pushing your impact. And it is the fastest growing model of a club in Rotary world. And if you look at your program, there is an individual from, from the zone. He's a big dude, big, I mean, big, high, high up, lots of experience. His name is Corey, Corey Landowski. And I can't remember if he is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday night at seven o'clock. I highly, highly recommend um, you consider him for uh, your viewing pleasure, whether you can do it live or as these are recorded, um, we'll do it recorded. Because if you have a core group of members who are interested, say, in the environment, and that's what you speak to, that can draw other people in that are likewise interested in the environment, which transitions into expanding your reach. So what expanding your reach is about is growing your membership, but it is also expanding and growing your partnerships. Now, what I hope you'll see is that our first action item is impact. Our second priority is expanding your reach. They go hand in hand. All of these four priorities support each other. It's circular. It's circular. It's, it's, a, it's a very, very good plan. So again, expanding your reach, what are some of the things we can help you with? Our diversity, equity, and inclusion group, which Heather Vilhauer, who is our education chair, she does a lot of training in this area, and she has a session at 11 o'clock. And in this area, pull back and look at your club and say, what is it we're missing? Now, here's the key. A lot of times in today's world, in our country, when people think of diversity, equity, inclusion, you think race, okay? That's part of it. But it's also gender. It's also skill sets. So let's say you really want to expand your reach. And one of the ways that you really want to do that is through social media. But you look at your club membership and you don't have that skill set on your team. Look out in the community, do your research, pinpoint that skill set that could work in your need. Let's say you have a, a club that really does want to jump on the bandwagon of peace or the environment or some targeted service area. When you look out at expanding your reach, look at other nonprofit groups that are already doing that partner with them. Look at members in the community that could make great Rotarians. Invite them to your club. Go beyond and bring in great speakers that again, get the word of Rotary out there, but likewise help your members see the big global picture of what we're really all about, which is having impact, right? So the, the broader our reach, the bigger our partnerships, the growth in our membership, looking at the, the types of skill sets and people and individuals that have life stories different than our own, that's going to make us stronger. And again, rolls right back up to be club strong. The third area is actually one of my favorites. This is enhanced member participation. So since COVID, the, the number one concern, opportunity, issue that, that I have personally heard is we need to get our members back and engaged. Um, the last two, three years have been incredibly tough. We all know that. And and our routines got uprooted. 
uh, quite frankly, there's a lot of mental health issues going out there that we probably don't even realize because it's not just COVID, it's the fires, it's just um, the economy, the the government. I mean, for it, it's just crazy. And maybe it was just like this in the 60s. I don't know. I get to say I was a baby then, not quite, but um, but again, it's it's a tough, tough time that we're coming out of. And so what I am collecting are stories of what clubs are doing to enhance their member participation and engagement. And again, it all ties into your reach and wanting to have impact, um, but be flexible. Have you changed how your meetings take place? So I am in a very traditional club. Um, we meet at noon every Tuesday, but we've had a couple of meetings where we've not met at our normal place and we've gone off site and we've gone to some amazing um, wineries. Up north in Mount Shasta, where I just was um, the last few days, they literally have one social a month, one field trip a month, and they're a noon club. So they have their traditional meeting two times a month, a field trip one time a month, and a social one time a month. And when I talk about field trips, I'll, I'll be honest, I thought this one was kind of weird. It was to a concrete factory. And I happened to read in their newsletter about this field trip and I'm going, a concrete factory. Okay, okay, that's different, but that's good because you're mixing it up. I couldn't put the article down and it was a long article and it was fascinating. The next one they're doing, they're gonna take a ski lift all the way up to the top of a mountain and have a picnic up there in the fall. Um, in our club, we have gone to um, a sports club to have a meeting. Um, in the chat, add any unique things you guys have been doing. And this, this I would love to be able to chat, but, but not able to do that in this, this venue. So again, thank you for working with us. But add to the chat, because these, these are best practices. And, and you have to come to terms with where your members are. The other thing I want to talk about in terms of enhanced member participation, and this is for our new members, and we've got two of them here, so I hope you can hear me. I hope you can hear me. Um, growing strong Rotarians is a key role at the club level. Okay, this is where you go through your orientation. You get to learn what your club is all about. Um, many clubs have the red badge to the blue badge. If you do something other than red badge to a blue badge, please add that in chat. But it's, it's a way of getting you to understand the club culture, meet people, those types of things. But I will share 50% of new members leave Rotary in the first three years. And so there is a new program that Dave Wall, he's one of our presenters this week, um, that he is working on. I don't think this is exactly his topic, but I want you to know his name. He is putting together an online training, orientation, building relationships of new Rotarians to each other beyond the club level. And why we think this is important is that while we have two new members here, right now in our district, we have almost 40 new members who, who have joined in the last two months. And I'll be looking at the statistic to see how many of those new members have participated in this training. Because this is how you start learning the bigger picture of Rotary. Um, my, my quick story is an introduction to Pismo Beach Rotary, so I'm not slamming anybody in our district, was I was asked to donate to my um, Paul Harris Fellow. And it was like, well, what is a Paul Harris Fellow? Why would I donate a 
thousand dollars, a hundred dollars, five hundred dollars to this. Why would I do that? And the answer was, I don't really know. It's just something we do. And we feel that with the program that Dave is working on is that if we give our new Rotarians a bigger picture of what Rotary is all about, it's going to support, what do I say? Oh God, I'm so proud to be a Rotarian. I am so proud to be a Rotarian. It is so big. And we want everybody to understand that. The strength of Rotary is at the club, absolutely. Absolutely. But it's when we work together and we draw on the resources of this amazing organization that we can do so many cool things. And that's why we stay. The last of the four priorities is increasing your adaptability. Now, this, again, relates back to member participation and engagement. Okay. Just like that member participation deals with our reach, which rolls back to impact. And let me explain. So increasing your adaptability and being flexible. Um, there's many facets to this. Um, probably the most um, open one that, that we've come through because of COVID is the ability to do hybrid meetings. Now, if you are doing a hybrid meeting, please put that in chat because I'm interested, we are interested in tracking this because we do hear that people are tired of Zoom and we get that, we get that. Yet, you may have a club culture where it is hard for people to get away to come to meetings. Hybrid gives them an alternative as long as there's still that socialization, that meeting face-to-face -face opportunity. The other thing that is meaningful from a hybrid meeting is that you can have amazing speakers. And as I chat with Rotarians and I ask, well, you know what, what kind of gets you going in a club meeting, if I go specific like that, and I will hear time and time again, the great great speakers that people have. And the hybrid world just completely opens that up. And La Marinda Sunrise, you guys are one of the top on the speakers. Um, awesome speakers. Berkeley, dynamite, dynamite. Um, and, and Fairfield Sassoon, we are upping our game on the hybrid model so that we can have this experience. So if your club is interested in strengthening that hybrid flexibility, I just mentioned three clubs for you to talk to. La Marinda Sunrise, Berkeley, Fairfield Sassoon, and there's many others, there's many others. Um, uh, but that just opens the world of the type of speakers you can get. The other piece of adaptability is what we were talking about in terms of member engagement. Um, and, and I kind of, Marsha Brown, um, she's might be back today. She's been in Uganda doing a wheelchair project, but Marsha Brown is a critical person that you will want to get to know. She's happy to come and speak to your club. Um, but as membership chair, um, it's like um, in this mode of flexibility is shake up when, where, and why you meet. What are the needs of your of your Rotarians. The other person that is wonderful is Janet Kennedy, and she's our member engagement chair. This is a new position this 22-23 this, this year, um, because we want the club experience, the Rotary membership experience to be wonderful. Um, so I'll, I'll leave it with that. If you are doing anything wonderful in, again, making, I'm going to go to the bottom line, really honing in on what your members want and changing things since COVID to try to meet those needs, 
please share that in chat because that's that's just huge. And here is my closing slide. How, let's see, I can't see your hands again. Sorry, I keep going there. The District 5160 Resource Guide and Directory. You can find the link on DACDB. And the reason I put this here as a closing slide is that this is an electronic directory. All of those flower charts that you saw on the screen are in this directory. So if you are going to move forward with your club leadership to develop an action plan based on the areas of um, increase our impact, expand our reach, um, increase member engagement, and enhance our flexibility and adaptability, in this resource guide are ideas of what the district can help you think through for each of those four areas. The pages that you see to the right are not for you to be able to read, but those are pages in the directory. And it shows you the wealth of the different people that have volunteered to support our clubs to be club strong. And there's probably 150 individuals or more listed in this directory. And so you can find the committee chair, you can see the people who are on that committee, maybe they are in your club and you go talk to them. Maybe they are next door to you in a club and you call them up. Everything's electronic. You get the emails, you get the phone numbers of everybody. And the other thing for those AGs and club presidents that are on this call, there's a whole section that lists all of the club presidents and secretaries alphabetized by club. So please find this directory. If you have trouble finding this directory, email me. Um, Kelly Rhodes Poston, who is our communications chair and is now shifting over to our district conference um, chair, she was instrumental in putting this together and it's a horrific, horrific effort. So you see my uh, email there. If you want more information just on Rotary's um, strategic plan and their action plan items beyond what has been presented here, you can go to rotary.org forward slash strategic plan. Quite frankly, I would just Google Rotary strategic action plan for priorities and a wealth of information will come up for you. The last thing I want to plug is that if you have not gone to our district Facebook page, please go there, please like it, please share those items to your own club Facebook page, to your own personal page, and or put information from that Facebook page into your club bulletin up on the screen because we are regularly providing lots of tidbits and information to again inspire our members, um, share ideas on how to increase impact, etc., and so forth. So with that, I'm going to stop sharing so I can see you all. We did it! We did it! Unmute yourself. <laughs> Please do not give up on Zoom events as a, as a mode of training um, from, from what happened to me today. Um, the reason that we're really trying to push this is that so more people can come to the training. Um, if, if we do this live, which many of you have participated in, movies <coughs> have not, um, basically we offer a live session up north and we offer a live session down south and it takes 
pretty much your whole day, depending how close you live to the, the site. In the spring, we will be doing things live, so you still get that live experience. But again, we're just trying to really get amazing offerings out to you. And I think there's 21 different offerings that is just more than you'd ever get if you did it live. They also are recorded and um, we'll, be, we'll be marketing that to more people too. So anyway, if people could put their pictures up real quickly, I have to take a picture. Oh, you're, some of you are already leaving. I'll get your names. I'll get your names. Okay. Hi, wave, bye. Thank you so much. Love you. Rotary hugs, rotary hugs. <laughs> we'll catch you later. Bye.